always wear your safety glasses and your safety hearing. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> To another episode of Summerfield Farm and Draft Horses and I am Danielle and uh, I do all a lot of the work around here. Um, husband does a lot of the electrical stuff and I do a lot of the, the building and stuff like that. He does help too and he does some of the building um, but he has his own little niches that he's really really good at and I have niches that I'm really good at. So um, this is our barn, our huge very big barn. Um, I've always wanted a barn on our farm, and um, I got it this year. <laughs> we've been here for about uh, three years now. We've been in a, we've been a farm officially for the past year, I want to say. Um, and we've got the two horses currently. We've got a surprise coming at the end of the month. Um, we've got two cows. We've got uh, well, I bought 14 guinea hens and they all flew out um, they flew out of there the other day two days ago and I've only seen four um, so I don't know if they're still around yet or not um, they might be I saw them yesterday so I don't know the guineas aren't all that smart and they tend to run away there's a wasp over there he just went up on the thing so we've got supposedly 14 guineas um, 10 chickens and of course the two cows and the horses so um, yeah we're trying to be just like a small homesteading farm um, the cows are our meat cows for the winter and um, I might do it again next summer I might not I might even do one over the winter I don't know I haven't decided yet but today uh, I am putting in windows for the stalls so as you can see the stalls do not have any windows and I think it's very important if a horse is stalled uh, to have a window at least. Um, horses that are stalled in general tend to go a little loopy because you figure horses walk about 21 miles to 24 miles a day when they're walking out and about. They sleep for only four hours, like sleep, sleep. They doze a little bit here and there, but in general, total about four hours a day. So if you think about it, you're in a little box, and usually stalls are about this size. Um, this is a, uh, actually this is a, an 18 by 12 stall, and usually they're like 12 by 12, so they're a lot smaller than that. And then that one is like a birthing stall, that's a 20 by 12 stall. And then that one right there, that's another 18 or 15 by 12 stall. So they're usually smaller than that. And if you're stuck in that box, for 12 hours you, or longer if you think about it because say you go to the barn and you feed and you put them up after you know say six seven o'clock you know because you've done feeding and you need to get home the horse is put in the stall until seven o'clock and then maybe if somebody's at the barn they'll put your horse out about seven o'clock you know it's 12 hours they're what are you gonna do you're gonna go stir crazy I know I'd go stir crazy if I was in a box like that you know, if you think about it, um, a horse is nearly, what is it, eight feet long, six feet long? My guys are eight feet because they're bigger. But um, if I were in a box the size, for me, that's the same size as for them, I'd be in a stall, like, that's a 10 by 10. That's a lot smaller. I would be in a little teeny tiny box, and I would go absolutely bananas, stir crazy. So... If you have to stall your horse, um, give them something to do. Give them a window to look out of. That way they have something to look out. They can look and see what's going on outside. Um, gives them a little bit of mental stimulation versus just staring at that all day long. All day. For 12 hours, staring at that. How fun. Are you bored yet? Staring at that. For 12 hours with nothing to do 
So I'm putting the windows in. These guys aren't stalled ever, but I do leave the doors open so they can come in and out if they like. Um, I am all about giving horses a choice of where they want to stand, where they want to sleep, where they want to eat. Um, well, not really where they want to eat. They eat in here. <laughs> but um, if I give them like alfalfa versus soaked alfalfa, you know, I, I, I offer it to them. I give them the ability. I put out regular hay plus alfalfa hay plus they've got all the pasture. So I want to give them as much mental choice as possible um, when I'm not riding. <laughs> and when you're riding, it's totally different. You don't really pay attention to me. But um, so I am just a little bit of a mess this morning because I have been uh, cutting boards and I will show you. Oh yeah, see look, I finished my, my handle. So now I have a, a, a lock, an appropriate lock. So here, I'll show you. I wonder if I can just do it with one hand. So when you actually have it all lined up, the wind is blowing. So if you have it all lined up, it goes all nice and neat right in there. And then of course I have this here just as a, um, a safety feature, just in case Jarvis decides to push on it. But, yep. It works. I love it. So, um, I have been cutting some wood for the windows. And today I'm going to be staining them and um, cutting out a uh, hole in the stall. So, these are uh, three and a half foot long boards from edge to edge, edge to, where is it, my thing is backwards, edge, um, and they're going to be on the inside and on the outside, so these are going to be uh, pretty thick as far as stability because draft horses tend to rub and I don't want anything to flex, um, so I'm going to stain all of these on the outside and on this side. I'm not going to stain on this side simply because I have to put caulking and stuff like that and I don't want it to. It's going to be stained just like the doors. So, oh yeah, I built those too. Aren't they awesome? I love them. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to do that and let me show you um, <laughs> Yeah, the wind is opening the doors. Yeah, they open all the way out. They open like completely flat so the whole thing can be all open and uh all that stuff so let me show you what the window is going to look like in Darcy's stall okay so there's Darcy's stall and we're going to put a window right here and this is where it is it's right in the middle between these two pylons and it's uh three and a half feet by three and a half feet by three and a half feet and it's eight and a quarter inches away from each side here so it's centered on the the uh the frame so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a the frame here on the inside. Now it's going to overlap when I cut it. It's going to overlap this piece here by probably like that. So I want to make sure that the bottom of, sorry, my hands are all gross because I've been working. Um, I want to put the bottom of the board here at the bottom here so it stays nice and even. And then the other one goes here, same way. Oops, sorry, here. Same way. So now you ask yourself, okay, I got a board there on that side and I got a board on the other side. What about that gap right there? Well, they make these little foam things that you can put in here and really squash it down so it stays um, nice and watertight. But I don't think I'm going to use the foam. I'm going to use some adhesive, uh, adhesive building caulk and then get some spray and spray it in each one of the, the little holes. So I'm gonna do that um, all the way around. And then I bought some uh, one by two, one by fours, and that's gonna go on the inside um, as a sill plate, so to speak, and it's gonna go all the way around so it's all nice and smooth. So if Mr. I need to scratch my chest decides to scratch here, kinda like what he's done over here, um, that's a bad one over here where he's rounded all of this. <laughs> See, it used to be nice and like sharp, but now he just rubs all of this. He'll stand here and just rub back and forth. Um, then it'll be easier. So once all of that's done, now you're gonna have like a weak spot right there on the side of the building. So um, I need to frame it. 
So what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to take a board because it'll be down to about here. I'm going to take another two by four and run it all the way across the bottom and all the way across the top and bolt it to the side here. So I have a nice strong frame right there. So I'll have the two by four up here and the two by four up here. And then I probably should put one straight down here to add this kind of flexibility. Obviously I can't do one up here. Although if I was in a house, you'd have your header board, you'd have a piece here, you'd have one there, one there, and then one there. So um, that's the plan and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so that's, that's the plan. And yeah, I'm going to stick to it. So let's uh, get to staining. I'm not going to show you the staining part. Everybody knows how to stain. You take a rag. Um, I have one around here somewhere. I know I've got one around here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> rag and some gloves. And I am going to be using um, some of the Thompson's water seal that I used on the doors. I'm going to be using this, which, oh, hold on. There you go. <laughs> Thompson's water seal in walnut. So I'm going to use, and it's a transparent. So um, it you can see the wood grain behind it, like what I did over here. So it stains it in a walnut color and then it's transparent so you can see all the grain. So that's what I'm going to do. I still have some in that bucket right there. Left over. Oh god, I'm walking through all these spider webs. Left over from when I did the doors. So let's let's get going, I guess. Um yeah. Alright, let's get to work. because oh my gosh my hands are all sweaty I feel like I just came out of like a pool my hands are so pruney you know, like when you in the bathtub too long hi Darcy hi handsome did you coming in for some hay yeah and Jervis is coming in it's a really nice breeze through here right now and they can stand and get hot He's going in to get hay. He's going in to get some hay. And then he'll go in there. This is the perfect time to explain to you. He's got some hay right there too. So if you can think, going back to my earlier mention in in the stall, if he was in a stall like that for 12 hours long. There's not a lot of room to move. There's not a lot of room to stretch. Um, obviously, he would be in a little bit bigger stall because he's big. Because they need to at least have some room to lay down and roll in. Um, but he just happens to like to like it in that one. I don't know why. And um, the two of them have been in this one before. But uh, this is a better size, so they at least have some room to move around in. Hi, buddy and lay down if he wanted to and he can roll so um so anyway yeah that's that's that okay back to my uh my stuff so i'm gonna let this dry i'm gonna put the lid lid my wood back up on top and i stack them this way so they have a lot of air to move right through them and uh the next thing would be to start cutting the hole in that stall but since he's in there and they have just come in from uh the outside where it's hot i'm gonna have to wait so oh well let's watch darcy for a minute hi buddy say hi to youtubes oh do you have a oh your nose is all sunburnt right here 
Your nose is sunburnt. You have a sunburnt nose. Your snip is sunburnt. Sunburnty snip? <laughs> I'll have to put something on there to keep it. That's got to be uncomfortable. Oh, poor guy. But he's, uh, his, um, he's on percent and he's starting to shed, but as you can see, he's not really as hot as he usually is, but he's breathing pretty good. I know. Plus you're smelling all the smells in here, huh? So, he's got to, uh, I'll cool him down in just a little bit. I'll spray him, spray his legs, cool him down. But, not too bad. Right, buddy? I know. I know, it's hot in here. Why he decides to stand in the stall is beyond me, because there's more breeze out here. Hey, buddy. How you doing, handsome? You say hi to YouTubies? Oh, that's so nice. What a good boy. And your ears, too. <laughs> See, he's got some hay down there. Yeah. Alright, so, um, yeah. I guess I'm just going to call it just a, a little bit for now. Um, I'll come back later in the day after he's out of that stall. Um, and uh, that way I can get cutting into that window. But by then, it shouldn't take too, too long. I have a, a grinder, so it shouldn't take too long to cut that window. And then I can start putting those in. And by then, those will be dry, um, and we should be okay. So I guess it's just ta-ta for now until uh, it'll be a little later for me, but it'll be like a millisecond for you. So I guess I will be right back, just like that. And here we are again. It's been about an hour. Um, he's sleeping, <laughs> and uh, Darcy's actually in there too. Big shadow just fell, or flew over. Big vulture, did you see that? So um, Darcy is in there, and uh, he's just eating the hay that's in there, and he's just going to relax. So um, as you can see, Jarvis is um, 17 hands, and Darcy is... 15. He's in there. Um, you can see that a 20 by 12, a 20 by 12 stall um, really fits him very well as far as being able to move around, turn around, lay down, roll if he has to. So let's go check on our uh, our stain, shall we? Okay, so these are all the window panels for three windows. Um, I am going to need four, so I am going to have to cut another eight out of those, which is fine because I have the wood right there. Um, I just didn't do it because I wasn't sure if I was going to have three or four windows. But um, this is all dry. It's all dry now. It looks amazing. It looks really, really nice. I'm really happy with the way it came out. So um, we're going to cut a hole and get at least this done today. And uh, once all of these frames are in to each one of the holes, um, I can take, where's the other stuff? I think it's over here. I can take, yeah, those little pieces right there, those little guys. Um, I can stain those um, on the inside, and then, like I said before, we'll just uh, put those on the inside of the window, and then I can build the doors um, sometime this week. Um, for the doors. I have all the hardware. You should see. Did I bring the hardware down? I think I did. Yeah. Okay, so each one of these, this is the hinges. For each one of the hinges. They've got a really cool little uh, shape at the end. I have the same uh, hinges on my uh, gates up at the house, so I want to try to keep everything um, continuity, I guess. That's what I want to call it. I don't know. So I bought I bought four of them. Jarvis just came out of the stall. And then I have um, these kind of lashes. Let me see if I can open this one. <laughs> Jarvis came out of the stall. He's like, do you have treats? No. I have no treats. Now these are going to go on um, the outside of the door to... Um, latch them in nice and tight so that'll be pretty awesome
So I got all of those. I got these four latches. Um, yeah, so that's how I'll show you what this one looks like. See the ends? They're pretty cool. So these are going to be on the doors. So that's pretty neat, huh? That's going to look awesome. At least I think so. I think it's going to look awesome. So the black hardware and the latches are all going to be on the outside. So um, they look better. And uh, it looks pretty from the outside. So, so all right. <laughs> I'm glad you guys get to see this. That's what I see. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? You watching me? Yeah, you are. <laughs> actually ever using an angle grinder before. Obviously that part needs to be flipped. I think I'm doing pretty good. But uh, I think my battery is going to die, so let's go get a new one. Basically what I'm going to do is clamp each board on either side, put there, 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 and I got to drill some holes where I want them to be through here, because um, I'm just going to use wood screws to go all the way through versus um, metal screws because I'm going to go from wood to metal to wood, and uh, we'll go from there. But isn't that pretty? That's going to look really awesome. I really like that. Huh, I can't wait to do the other ones. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we have our window. Um, I cut the window all the way out, as you could see, and uh, it was a little bit, it was easy, um, but I think I got a piece of metal in my eye because I did not wear safety glasses, so I will have to go to the ophthalmologist uh, tomorrow and uh, see if maybe there's something in there. Um, probably. My mom had a piece of metal in her eye once, and it dug a hole in her eye. It was pretty awful. And I had a piece of plastic in my eye. I don't know how it got in there, but um, it blew in from under my helmet when I was riding my motorcycle because I had my helmet cracked just a little bit, and somehow it blew in and created all sorts of problems. So um, I'll probably get that taken care of uh, tomorrow. But in the meantime, what I was planning on doing, if, I, if you guys recall the way I had explained it, was I was going to um, um, clamp the two sides, two sides, two sides, and two sides, and then you know glue it all together. Um, it's not going to work out that way. One because uh, my thumb still doesn't work so well, and I don't have a lot of grip. I mean, I can't. That's just about it. That's as far as it goes. Um, so I can't hold on to things like I used to. And I don't have the strength in my hand like I used to. So it would be a little difficult to do it that way in pieces in order for me to 
make sure it all lined up. But so instead of having, you know, like that as a window where it's going to be a window inside it, there's not going to be any windows. So it's just going to be an opening that's framed in. So I put all of the frames there and I'm going to build them separately and then just put them up individually. All right, so I put this on the outside, line it all up nice and pretty because that's what it'll look like on the outside. We have a bit of a problem. So, what do you do? You know what I mean? It doesn't lay flat like it's supposed to, like, like that, with the metal sandwiched in between because this is up. And that's up so how do we make this flat so it goes flat with this well one way is to let's take my snips snip this and snip that cut this little bit out which is easy enough to do um, that way this is all flat and make sure that this sits flush that so I'm gonna give that a shot here on the scrap piece and see what it looks like so I've cut the pieces out like I said I wanted to do and this what is what it'll look like from the outside of the barn um, there it's probably better um, and I'll probably seal this up and I'll seal that up and that way it fits nice and flush like it's supposed to all the way across so this is what I just did. I just notched it so it stays flat. So I think that's what I'll do on all the other pieces. I have a feeling though that um, I'll be able to cut it on the inside, but I think I'll have to use the grinder to cut this part because using the snips on this side, it's backwards on the outside. Well, let's go. Let's go find out. Let's go over to that section and see what happens. Okay, so there's our window. <laughs> Looks kind of weird <laughs> being over here. I might be able to do it. I just need to cut at least just a little bit off of the side here. Just cut in there, cut in there, cut in there. I might be able to do that from the outside. I might be able to do that before the rain. I'm starting to get a rainstorm, I'm sure. I might be able to do that. Hi, Darcy. Hey, buddy. How are you? <laughs> All right, well, I suppose we can measure and then give it a shot. <laughs> oh, boy. More measuring. More guessing. But, you know, I think it'll look right, and I think that's the best way to do it. Is I, I think I'll just take a little bit off of each side and go from there. So I got all my notches cut out. It's not pretty. Um, I did this part by hand, and then I did use the grinder to cut out this part, which is why it's up a little bit farther up and down on that. Um, so I'm going to have to think of a workaround maybe for that. Um, either that or just put a bunch of silicone right there on the edges, which probably isn't a bad idea anyway. But there's the way it's going to look. Um, obviously, it needs some tweaking, but this is just a mock-up. Um, and I'll put some sealant on. I'll probably do the back side first um, or the front side, depending on the way you look at it. Um, probably do that side first. I don't know. That way I can seal it from the inside. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, let's go outside and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's what it'll look like from the outside. Um, from here, it doesn't look bad. Um, from here, it kind of looks awful um, because of the grinding marks. I'm definitely going to have to seal that up um, and this will have to be tweaked and of course pushed over because we want it to make it match just like that. So there will be some some filler um, and figure out how to make that nice and neat and kind of seal that up nice and tight. Not really sure how to do it quite yet but I'm sure I'll think of something. <laughs> um, Husband is probably going to be all mad about it, but um, we'll think of something for it. But again, it's not straight, so this it's just this one holding this up, so it, that's going to look more like that. So I think having 
you know, some caulking on here will be just fine and it won't look awful. I'll try to make it look good. So, I guess it's not bad. Well, the window is going to be opening on that side anyway, but, and, you know, it's going to be on every single one of them. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I could probably cut it all the way off here, you know, but that's probably not a good idea. Oh, well, let's get back to work. 